Since we're already done with the top 1 and top 2 Marksman heroes last M3, let's now go to the top 3 hero with 70.4% pick band rate, Nathan. Unlike Beatrix and Clint that have high pick rate, Nathan is actually the opposite. He's the top 5 on most banned heroes last M3. 95 games, 43 of them Nathan was banned. That doesn't end there. According to the Mobile Legends website, Nathan is the top 2 on most banned heroes on ranked games. Nathan is a flexible pick. He can be a position 4 in the mid lane like what Onyx did, or he can be on the gold lane or a jungler. But since most of the time he gets banned more than getting picked, we have limited matches to analyze. So for this video, we'll just focus on a jungler Nathan, since he gets more frequently used as a jungler than a gold laner or a mid one. If you want to know how to use him on the cold lane, you may watch our clinch tutorial to have an idea on cold lane rotation and laning techniques. One of the reasons why we think Nathan is effective on the professional scene is because pro players know exactly when his power spike will be. What's a power spike? That's the point in the game when your hero gains sudden increase in strength. Could be because of level. For example, a level 3 Gushan has 1890 total combo damage, but once he reaches level 4 and you can use his ultimate, the total combo damage gets almost doubled. In Nathan's case, however, his power spike doesn't come from leveling up. His items trigger it. Meaning, even though Nathan rises to level 4 at an earlier time, his damage won't be as much. If you are to look at successful matches with Nathan last M3, all were just passive during early games, since players know well that the power spike will happen in mid to late game once they have items. Remember when Wise was using Nathan in their match against Gate Stores? 8 minutes into the game but still 0 kill, 0 death, 0 assist. And when he engaged in the clash, that ended the match. Another thing, we know that Kairi has an aggressive gameplay, especially when he's using Lance or Ling. But when he's using Nathan, he's very disciplined, so reserved. He won't engage in a clash unless he has items. Look here, 2 minutes into the match and he still doesn't have any items. His power spike is still a long way away so he did not contest the turtle. He traded the turtle for the cold plate on the top lane. In here, Kyrie steals the purple buff from Alucard and he quickly backs away. Imagine there are 4 of them here. Alucard's HP is already cut down. Delor has managed to make Brody go away, but Kyrie did not engage. What's the reason? Look at the game timer. 2 minutes and still no items. It isn't the time for his power spike yet. Meanwhile, Alucard has already reached his first power spike since he already has his ultimate. If Kyrie were to engage here, sure he would be able to kill Alucard. But there's still a high chance that his Nathan would get killed in the process. And that won't do him good since it would delay his power spike. On the other hand, Alucard's power spike will still just continue. With that said, it's important to respect your hero's power spike as well as your enemy heroes. Don't just go charge at them. If you are to be passive on using Nathan during the early game, then what should we do so we could still help out the team? Look for a trade, like what Kyrie did here. Here's the raffle for this video. If you're new here to show our gratitude, we will be giving away emotes, starlight, or skin each time a new video is uploaded. You just need to subscribe to our channel, like this video, and leave a comment. Much better if it's a gameplay tip or any in-game experience related to the topic so you can also help out our fellow subscribers. All comments will be part of the raffle for the next video. Let's start! You will be getting Send a message to our Facebook page to claim your prize Look for a trade, like what Kyrie did here Since the turtle is on the bottom lane, instead of betting Nathan's life on getting the turtle, he traded the turtle with the enemy's orange buff Then he proceeded on taking down a turret Keep in mind that if you know that you can't get the turtle, just go over to the opposite lane to look for a trade. You can take down turrets, cold plate, or still their buffs. Opposite lane, okay? So the enemy team won't be able to quickly go after you since they are far away. Same with gank. If you know that there's gonna be a possible gank, run towards the opposite lane. You can trade a turret like what Kyrie did here. Or you can just go after the enemy side jungle crypts to reduce their resources. Another thing that we notice is that Kyrie doesn't stay too long on lanes. Right after getting an objective, he goes back to continue jungling. Like here.
Now, let's go to jungle rotation. Lethal can spawn on either side. Kairi always starts his jungle rotation in the purple buff. With Nathan's issue on mana, his skills consume a huge amount of it. So, it's important that you get the purple buff first. After that, if Leto is on the purple side, Kairi will use Retribution there. Then after getting Leto, if he thinks that the enemies won't invade him, he goes for the Lizard. Next, he goes to the orange buff. Make sure to hit Nathan's skill 1 on the core set to get 2 stacks. Don't use skill 1 and skill 2 at the same time. Wait before Nathan's passive is about to wear off. Then use skill 2 to maximize the passive's duration. After getting the orange buff plus the bear, Kyrie goes after Kramer. Your next move will depend on the current situation. You can get the turtle, you can gank, or maybe trade the turtle for gold plating or buffs. I know you're all familiar with Nathan's skill mechanics, but we just want to talk about how Kyrie utilizes Nathan's ultimate. And to do that, let's have a run through on Nathan's skill mechanics. Nathan's passive has three effects. One, his basic attack will return back to him. Two, he doesn't get any magic penetration from any items or emblems. This is the reason why we don't use support or magic emblems with him. It's also the reason why arcane boots won't help him. In exchange, a physical lifesteal and physical penetration gets converted to magic lifesteal and magic penetration. And that's the reason why we use an assassin emblem. Three, each time his skills hit a target, Nathan gets a stack. Each stack gives attack speed and movement speed. Nathan's skill 1 is straight damage and it doesn't have any special effects. You can use this to check the bushes and although it doesn't give any vision, once you hit someone underneath, you'll gain a stack. For skill 2, aside from dealing damage, it knocks back your target. A good thing about this, unlike skill 1, if you use this to check bushes, it gives out a vision if it lands in a hero. And now, Nathan's ultimate. This actually has many uses, but let's just focus on what it can do. It is going to summon a reverse clone that will mimic Nathan's action. The reverse clone will get 30% of Nathan's attack attributes. This is the reason why we go for a burst build with Nathan. Let's now go to the right way to use this reverse clone. Kyrie has two ways. First, he directs it toward the enemy hero he is after, or if he's checking bushes. Second, he directs it to his back, not sidewards. What's the reason? One, if you direct Nathan's ultimate to his side, it's gonna be hard for the reverse clone to hit with the skill 1. Unlike if you aim the ultimate on Nathan's back, it's gonna be a sure hit, the higher the damage it will deal. Second reason is for an easy escape. In all of Kyrie's matches with Nathan that we've watched, roughly 95% of them, he really aimed Nathan's ultimate to his back. When it comes to emblems, go for killing spree for penetration from an assassin emblem and sustain from its passive. When it comes to build, go for magic shoes since arcane boots won't help Nathan. If you're thinking about swift boots, Nathan doesn't need it since his passive gives him attack speed. After that, hunter strike for mobility. It is a huge help since it will speed up jungling, so you can farm monsters quickly. And also of course for penetration. Next, you have two options. You can go with what Wise builds. He goes for Malefic Roar if his enemy builds a defensive item too soon, or Blade of Despair for burst damage. If you're thinking that Endless Battle should be built first, especially when you're on gold lane, since Nathan is quick to run out of mana without purple buff. Oheb usually goes for Azure Blade. He doesn't advance it to Endless Battle, but Blade of Despair for burst damage. If you went first for a Blade of Despair, then go for Malefic Roar next. If you went first with Malefic Roar, then go for a Blade of of this bear next. Next will be a defensive item. You can go for Immortality or Wind of Nature if you're against enemy heroes with physical burst damage. If they are magic burst damage, Athena's shield of course. Then go for Endless Battle if the match is still ongoing. You can actually let go of the boots then just buy another defensive item. Nathan's passive and Hunter's Strike can give you enough movement speed anyway. That's all for now. Thank you for watching.